All right, so this is our midterm review seven. I did staple this backwards, so we're starting on problem seven just to make sure it stays the same order as yours. So if A is supplementary to B, supplementary means they add to equal 180. And A and C are vertical angles. Vertical angles we learned are congruent. And the measure of angle C is 45. What is the measure of angle B? Well, if C is 45 and A and C are congruent, right? So that tells me that the measure of angle A must also equal 45 because this is 45. And then if A and B are supplementary, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B should equal 180. Well, if A is 45, I want to find B. They add to equal 180. Well, if I subtract 45, X is going to equal 135 degrees for the measure of angle B. What is the value of x in the figure below? Well, this part's 2x plus 10. This part here is 3x plus 5. Together here is a linear pair. Linear pairs add up to equal 180. So 2x plus 10 plus 3x plus 5 equals 180. Combine your like terms, 2x plus 3x is 5x, 10 plus 5 is 15, subtract 15, so 5x equals 165, divide by 5, so x equals 33. Find x and y here given this diagram. All right, so I see that this is a right angle here, and if this is 27, x plus 27 should equal 90. So I'm gonna subtract 27, and that's gonna give me x equals 63 degrees. Then if this whole thing is 90, so is this, because together this is a full line, 180. So y plus y equals 90, right? That means that they're going to be the same, right? So I'm going to take 90, divide it by 2 to get 45 for y. All right. A, E, B. A, E, B, remember the letter in the middle is where the mark would be, is 2x plus 32. D, E, C is 1 half x plus 65. These are vertical. Vertical angles, which means they are congruent. So I'm going to set them equal. I'm going to subtract 32. 2x equals 1 half x uh, plus 33. I'm going to subtract that 1 half x. That's going to give me 1 and a half. x equals 33. Divide by one and a half, x equals 22. The equation for line G is given here. Suppose G is parallel to R. So I know that G is parallel to R and it's perpendicular to E. And they both line R and E both have this point, which is x comma y. So my original line y, or excuse me, g, I need to solve to get y by itself so I can figure out the slope. So in order to write an equation that's for r and e, I need to know the slope of the original line here. So let's see, I've got 5y, right, equals negative 2x. Minus 20. I'm going to divide everything by 5. So y equals negative 2 over 5x minus 4. This is line G. So if I want to write an equation in slope intercept form for line R, well, G and R are parallel, I should use the same slope. So I want to use m equals negative 2 over 5. I need to find b by using y equals mx plus b. Here's the point that's part of that's on this line. 
Here's the slope. So I have y, m, and x we're going to solve for b. So for part a, right, for part a, y, 8 equals m times x plus b. I made this a fraction. I'm going to cross simplify. 5 goes into 5 one time and goes into 10 two times. I'm left with negative 2. So a equals negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 1 times 1 on the bottom is not needed, plus b. Subtract 4, I get 4 equals b. So up here, 4 is b. That means my equation is y equals negative 2 over 5x plus 4. All right, now for part b. This one, g and e are perpendicular, so I want to use the opposite reciprocal of this, so positive 5 over 2. I need to find b. Again, I'm using this point, so a equals um, 5 over 2. Here I'm going to cross simplify, divide those both by 2, I get 1 and negative 5. So I have 8 equals 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 1 times 1 on the bottom is not needed. Add 25, so that um, 33 equals b. So I get y equals 5 over 2x plus 33. We've been doing a lot of these, so this should be hopefully very familiar at this point. All right, so suppose line C and D are parallel. So C and D are parallel. Which angles are definitely congruent to angle six? So I know it has all these arc marks, but they're not trying to use us to be congruent here. They're trying to use us to show that these are the angles we're talking about. So angle six here, if these are parallel, this is my transversal. Okay, so three and six are corresponding. Right, so angle three and six because they're corresponding. We learned those are congruent, so I can definitely say angle three is one of the angles. Well, then let's say if six was 10, that would make 30 10, right? Well, three and four are vertical. We learned those are congruent, right? We also could look at six and four would be alternate exterior. Either way, I could, I could identify the angle four is definitely congruent. So if this was alternate exterior, those are congruent. And if this was 10, this would be 10. And because I already showed that these two are congruent, these are vertical angles, 10 would also be 10 here. Now, I don't know anything about these angles because these angles, yes, they're on these parallel lines, but they have to share a transversal with the given angle. So none of those are definitely congruent. I don't know enough information. So these are the only ones that are. Here I need to find the measure of angle one. I'll notice this makes a triangle. So let's see if I can figure out these angles to find one. Well, these two are vertical, right? vertical we learned are congruent so this must be 38 degrees here these two are a linear pair linear pair we learned add up to 180 so if I do 180 minus 108 I get 72 here for angle 3 oh what do you know three angles in a triangle add up to 180 right so the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three, we learned add to 180. I know two of those angles. So 180 minus 38 and minus 70, what is that, 72? Um, that is 110, so that gives me 70 degrees for the measure of angle one. All right, on the back, find the measure of angle C, B, D. So I'm looking for this. So let's know, figure out what we know. I know here's a triangle here. I know this is 25. So there's a couple things I could do. I can use that these are a linear pair. 
these two angles here, which means I add to 180. So if I want to find this angle, which would be the measure of angle BDC, 180 minus 80 would give me 100. Ah, and then I have a triangle here, and all three angles in the triangle add to 180. So I can do 180 minus 100 minus 25, and that's going to give me 55 for that angle there. So the measure of angle CBD is 55 degrees. All right, a company is making different size statues that are the shape of an hourglass. Use the figure to find the missing measure of X. All right, so let's see, these are vertical angles. So if this is 65, so is this again. Vertical or congruent. Oh, now I have all three angles here. X is one of the three, I know these two. We know all three angles in the triangle add to 180, so let's subtract the ones we know. I get 53 for X. Consider the angles formed by the garden gate. Given that three and four are vertical angles, what can be concluded? So I see this angle seven, five, six, two, one, three, and four. So it can be concluded that three is congruent to four since vertical angles are congruent. That is absolutely true. Let's see. It can be concluded that three and four are congruent since all vertical angles are right angles. No. Vertical angles are not all right angles. It can be concluded that the angle three plus angle four's measures equal 180 since the sum of measures of a linear pair are 180. Okay, linear pairs do add to 180, but three and four are not linear pairs. No way. It can be concluded that three and four are complementary. Not necessarily, I only know they're complementary. If I know they're adding to 90, I don't know that. So this is my only true answer. All right, if y is 3x, what is the length of AC? Well, if y equals 3x, right here, that's 3x. 3 times 3x plus 2, that gives me 9x plus 2 to represent AC. So I have to find x somehow to find this length. Well, AC, I don't know anything as far as it relating to the other sides. But what I do know is that A, B, and C A are congruent. Congruent parts we always set equal. So I'm going to subtract 5, divide both sides by 5, so I get x equals 5. And if I want to find AC, plug that in. So 9 times 5, which is 45, plus 2 is going to give me 47 for AC. Number 5, AC is the perpendicular bisector of BD. If BC is 2x plus 2 and CD is x plus 3, what is the value of x? Well, congruent parts we set equal. Subtract x. x plus 2 equals 3. Subtract 2. x equals 1. Last one. Given the measure of ACF, ACF, okay, that's the whole thing is 70. If the measure of angle ACB is 16, ACB, that's this one, is 16. What is the measure of BCD? BCD, okay. So I know all of this is 70. I see that this angle with one arc mark is congruent to this one, which means this is also 16. And then I see these two arc marks and these two arc marks, which mean those are both X. So let's see. The whole thing is 70. I know these two are 16. So if I subtract both of those 16s, I'm going to get 38. And 38 is equal to this now, right? So I know that x plus x has to equal 38. Well, that's 2x. So x equals 19. I can also think about if these are both the same measure, just take 38, divide that by 2. That's what I'm doing here. Just writing it down mathematically, what I'm thinking in my head. I get x equals 19.